here to talk about ellipses, and um, I'm giving you guys this. This is just your general equations and their graphs. Um, but let me, I'm gonna, you know, add to that and draw my own thing. Um, so, all right. So here we go. An ellipse is basically an egg <laughs> shape um, that is sitting either on its side or on its butt. <laughs> These are ellipses. Now, the center of the ellipse is represented by HK. So the center of the ellipse is the ordered pair HK. Okay, so this is HK. I'm not going to write it there because I need space. Um, obviously, that there, you know, the lines that go through the center um, from one end to the other. This would obviously be the longer line than. Um, you know, this one, right? So this length is greater than this length. And the same thing here. This is the shorter length going through the center from one end to the other of the ellipse. And this is the longer length, right? So that red um, length, red line from one end of the ellipse to the other, through the center along the long part of the ellipse is called the major axis. Okay, so in this case, the major axis is horizontal. Um, I'll write that here. I'm just going to say horrid. <laughs> and in this case, the major axis is vertical. Okay? Major axis, and in this case, is just vertical. Um, the green line is the shorter, it's the shorter line that goes to the center from one end of the ellipse to the other. And we call that the minor axis. So this is the minor axis. Okay, now <clears throat> the points that lie on the ellipse that are on the ends of the major axis are called the vertices. And vertex for singular, I'm just going to do ver here so I have space, ver vertices for plural. So vertices here, V, I'm just going to do V and V. The, um, the points on the ends of the minor axis through the center are the covertices, or covertex for singular. I'm just going to say CV, covertex, covertex, covertex. These are the points that lie on the ends of the minor axis. <clears throat> um, some more information about this detail. Um, the length from the center of the ellipse to the vertex along the major axis is represented by a small a. So if this is small a and this is small a, then the total length of the major axis, um, you're going to see me write ma for major axis, is equal to 2a, right? a plus a, twice a. Um, and the total length, I'll write that over here, of the minor axis, I'm just going to say minor axis, we represent the length from the center to an end or a covertex along the minor axis as B. So if this is B and this is B, the total length is B plus B or twice B. Okay, so the total length of the major axis is 2a, the total length of the minor axis is 2b. Um, what we call, uh, let me put them in yellow, foci um, and fo uh, focus for singular, they lie along the major axis. I'm going to do f and f. So f, f. f is a focus. Singular at fo, that's the plural version. They lie along the major axis, uh, so they would be here and here for the major axis being vertical. And the distance from the center, maybe I'll do that, to one focus is represented by small c. And there is a, um, a relationship between. A, B, and C for an ellipse. 
um, a squared minus b squared is equal to c squared. This is the relationship between a, b, and c in an ellipse. Now, hopefully you can see this. These are the equations, the general equations of an ellipse. Um, so they're, they're in their standard form, okay? So you'll see here x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. hk is the center. And um, notice that a, which is the larger value than b, because a is the corresponds to the major axis. The way that I represent, or I remember this, right, because they're the same formulas, it's just that the a squared and the b squared switches, right, if you can see between this one and this one. And that's just going to determine whether it's a, um, uh, an egg on its side or an egg on its butt, major axis horizontal or major axis vertical. If the a squared lies under the x stuff, <laughs> then the major axis is horizontal. If the a squared lies under the y stuff, then the major axis is vertical. Okay, um, so what I'll do is I'll graph a very simple uh, case. So let's just do x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 is equal to 1. So this is obviously the standard form of the equation of an ellipse. But I'm not subtracting or adding anything to x or y. So the center, we say, is at 0, 0, the origin. Now, the larger denominator in this case is the 9, correct? So since the larger denominator is the 9, the 9 represents a squared, because a is always bigger than b for an ellipse, so this is b squared, because I'm corresponding it to these, right? a squared or b squared underneath. So my a squared in this case is 9, and my b squared is 4, which means, I'm going to go back to white, which means that a, let me put it under here, is the um, square root of 9, or 3, and b is the square root of 4, or 2. Also, considering that the larger denominator is underneath the y squared, that means that the major axis is vertical. Right? The larger denominator is under the y squared, so the major axis is vertical. So I do have enough information to actually graph this. Um, let me just roughly sketch it, and if I want to find more details, I will. So the center is at the origin. Um, Stuff. Okay, the major axis is at the origin. Um, the I'm sorry, the center is at the origin. The major axis is vertical. Let's start there. So the distance, which is a, from the center to an endpoint or a vertex along the major axis, up and down. So from the center, I'm going to count one, two, three. Drop my point. That's the end of the of the um, major axis. From the center, go down, 1, 2, 3, drop my point. So I'm at 0, 3, and 0, negative 3. So I can determine my vertices now. My vertices are at 0, plus or minus 3, right? That contains both of them. 0, plus 3, 0, minus 3. <clears throat> and there's two vertices. These are the endpoints of the major axis. The minor axis would be horizontal because the major axis is vertical. So from the center to the right or the left, I count two units. One, two, one, two. So this is two, zero, or negative two, zero. And these are my covertices. I'm just going to put C, okay? Covertices. Write it out for you guys the first time. So covertices is plus and minus two, comma, zero. And then I can connect my dots just as I can. And you can see that it is an egg sitting on its butt. And <laughs> this is my ellipse for this case. Now, this is a nice little kind of simple scenario. Um, I didn't talk about focus yet, or foci yet. I will in the next example. Um, actually, let me do a little bit of it here. So, we talked about C. Um, I need to determine C to determine the location of my focus. One focus to get to the next one, a foci, plural. So, there's a relationship between A, B, and C. A squared minus b squared is c squared. So 9 minus 4 is c squared. So c squared is 5, or c is the square root of 5. 
So the square root of 5 is 2 point something, and the, fo the, fo the focus, or each focus, lies along the major axis. So if I go from the center, uh, square root of 5, 2 point something, up, um, approximately here, 2.5 down, approximately here, those are my um, foci. So sometimes you're asked to determine the ordered pairs of the, I'm going to write, of each focus. Um, and you're going up and down from the center along the major axis, so it's really just plus a uh, 0, plus and minus the square root of 5. So these are the ordered pairs for, my, for each focus. So you could be asked for vertices, you could be asked for co-vertices, you could be asked for, um, you know, anything here. The length of the major axis would be 6 twice A, the length of the minor axis would be 4 twice B. Um, so there's little details involved. It just takes a little practice, it's not that bad. And of a 3 by 3 matrix, so this is a bit more work, okay? So I'm going to go across the top here. We're going to take row 1, okay? And the pattern is plus, minus, plus. So we're going to start with the number 4. Um, once I start with the first number in row 1, what I'm going to do is, let me change the color real fast. I'll do colors so you guys can see the difference. Okay, so um, row one. So I'm going to start with, so dealing with row one, start with the first element in row one, so number four, right? When I'm dealing with number four, okay, what I do is I take number four, and whatever row and column that that first element is in, I'm just going to kind of cross it out. And whatever is left, I'm going to take the determinant of that matrix. So what I do again is I'm going across the top, row 1, and I'm taking the first element in row 1. And when I take that element, everything in its row and its column cancels, it goes away, and whatever's left is the matrix that I'm going to determine um, its determinant for, okay? So this is the first step. This is called a cofactor matrix. Um, we'll talk about that again uh, later, but next. Um, I'm going across row one. So I'm going to take the next element in row one. And when I take this element now, this row and this column cancel. So what's left? 3, 2. So let me say uh, minus 0. 3, 2. 4, 5. Take the determinant of that. Now, remember I said the pattern is plus minus plus. So I'm taking plus this element times the determinant of the leftover matrix, minus the second element, times the determinant of its leftover matrix, plus the third element, times the product, uh, times the determinant of its leftover matrix, which is 3, 2, negative 1, negative 3. And then simplify. So once I do all these operations, then I'll get the determinant of this full 3 by 3 matrix. So again, I go across row 1, first element times its corresponding determinant, leftover matrix, if you want to call it that, minus the second element times its leftover determinant matrix, um, plus the third element times its corresponding leftover matrix, and then we simplify. Now obviously 0 times anything is 0, so those two go. So it's really just simply this four times the determinant of this 2 by 2, which again we go diagonally, this product minus this product, negative 5 minus negative 12. So 4 times negative 5 plus 12, 4 times 7, um, which is 28. So 28 is the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. Um, let me do one more. Let's do negative 2 negative 4, negative 1, 7, let me try to keep it small numbers, 1, 3, negative 1, 0, 4, 2, right? I have this 3 by 3 matrix and I have these di um, straight lines indicating find its determinant. So I'm going to go again across the top. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to show the colors this time. I'm going across the top, and again, it's plus, 
minus plus. That's the, um, the pattern of the signs that go in front of the element. So plus the first element here, negative 2 times its leftover determinant matrix. So cross out this row and this column, and I'm left with 3, 4, negative 1, 2. Minus the next element. Let me scoot this over a little bit. Minus the next element, which is negative 4 across the top row, times its leftover matrix. So crossing out its column and its row, I'm left with 1, 0, negative 1, 2. Plus the next element in row 1, which is negative 1, times its leftover corresponding determinant matrix. Crossing out its column and its row, I'm left with 1, 0, 3, 4. And once I find all this, then I have my final determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. So negative 2 times this determinant, um, product of this diagonal minus product of this, 6 minus negative 4, plus 4 times its determinant, 2 minus 0, plus or minus 1, because plus minus 1, times its determinant, 4 minus 0. And then this is negative 2 times 10, plus 4 times 2, minus 1 times 4, so negative 20. Let me scoot this down. Okay. Negative 20 plus 8 minus 4. So negative 24. Or negative 20 plus this is 4. So negative 16 is my determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix.